Praise the Lord everyone. You are listening to Biblical Doctrines Demystified, a special series by Rev. Dr. Y. Raj Das on Sajiva Vahini. This audio series is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple and Google Podcast. Listen, share and subscribe. Dear friends, it's a great joy that I could reach out to you this day also with the word of God. And I want to talk to you about one declaration that Jesus made, I am the resurrection and life. Just to bank my message upon a particular verse, let me read to you from John's Gospel, 11th chapter, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Now, dear friends, the background of this particular verse is a family in Bethany, Mary, Martha and Lazarus. Lazarus was sick. They sent word to Jesus. Uh, Jesus did not come immediately. Then after some time, this boy died. Lazarus died. And uh, Jesus came to know about it. He came later. And when Martha met Jesus, she said, if he had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, your brother shall rise again. She did not fully understand the implication of what Jesus was telling. And Jesus spoke to her very clearly about uh, the resurrection of her own brother. And she did not understand it. Then later, Mary came to know that Jesus had come there. She came and fell at his feet and wept and said, Lord, if he had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus was moved in his heart. He wept when Mary wept. Jesus said, why have you laid him? When Jesus was brought to the grave, the grave was covered. And uh, Jesus said, remove the stone. And Martha said, he stinks now. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. You now this is what had happened. And Jesus was able to resurrect uh, Lazarus. And he lived for many years and served the Lord. I want to place before you this particular point of resurrection and life. And I want to bring it out in five points. The declaration of Jesus, I am. The implication for salvation of souls, the particular verse, implication for sanctification, implication to see the glory of God, implication for resurrection and judgment. The first point is declaration of the Lord Jesus because I am the resurrection and the life. Now, dear friends, when Jesus said I am, it has a deeper connotation about the sonship of God. Now, Jesus is the coexistent Son of God. When we look at the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am, it reflects what we read in Exodus. Third chapter, verses 13 to 15. When Moses met God in the burning bush, he wanted to know the name of God. God told him, I am that I am has sent you. He's sending you. So Jesus said, I am that I am. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. So when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, we must understand Jesus is the son of God. He was not equating himself with God the Father, but he had the right to say, I am. So if you look at John's Gospel as well as Book of Revelation, we can understand eight I am sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just let me recount it to you so that we will really be edified. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. I am the bread of life. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. And the book of Revelation, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and that all that are in between. So, dear friends, when Jesus came down into this world and before his death, you know, he was able to say, I am the resurrection and the life. So, when we come closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, we must understand the meaning of these deep words that came out of the heart of God the Father and also the Lord Jesus Christ. The second point about this particular verse, implication for souls. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. I want to just bring two implications of this particular verse. Dead men will not be able to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why did he say, uh, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live again. Now, dear friends, what we read here, what we understand in this particular point is, Mary was able to pray and she was spending time in the, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Lazarus died, Mary's tearful prayers brought Jesus to the problem. Jesus was able to bring Lazarus back to life. Jesus chose that good part that shall not be taken away from her. 
Now, before physical death of Lazarus, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we may face death. If it is God's will, he will bring us back to life. So, he said, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live again. Not that all who died will be able to come back to life like Lazarus. If it is God's will, he can raise up people from the dead, people who believe around the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in this particular instance, Lazarus was not able to believe on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He believed him before his death. The Lord brought him back because of the prayer of Mary. So, at the same time, my dear friends, we must understand that Jesus is the um, key of death and hell. So, Revelation 1, 18, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of Hades and death, keys of hell and death. So, Jesus is in control of the future. So, he can bring a person back to life if it is his will, a believer back to life if it is his will. The second implication of this particular verse is, John's Gospel, 5th chapter, 24th and 25th verse, verses, if we read, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, and he shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, those who hear will live. No, when dead people cannot hear God's word, at the same time, what he meant here is, I believe, people who are spiritually dead, unsaved people, when they are exposed to God's word, definitely Jesus can give them life if they open their hearts and also open their ears to hear God's word. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So, unsaved people who are spiritually dead can hear God's word. So, it is our duty to talk to such people the word of God. They are spiritually dead. But when we hear, when they hear God's word, if they open their hearts, definitely the Lord can give them life. So, when we look at this particular verse, he who believes in me, though he may die, shall live forever. He shall live again. So, a person who is spiritually dead can really be saved. Now, often many people are not able to keep their hearts and their ears open to hear God's word. Years back, I read the life of a person who never wanted to hear God's word. He hated God's word and he did not want to go to church to hear God's word, but he loved music. So, he wanted to hear singing. So, he went to a particular message, church and he was listening to the song, piano, music, everything he listened. Just before the commencement of the message, he put his uh, ears, uh, his fingers in the ears and he didn't want to hear God's word. And after the message would be over, there will be another song, he wanted to hear that song. So, he was there keeping his fingers uh, in his ears. But maybe God looked at his own situation, God sent a small fly. God can use anybody. God used um, donkey. Well, God can use anybody. So, God, the Lord sent a fly. The fly began to um, walk, I mean, move around. He sat on his forehead. He began to uh, crawl here and there. And he was trying to come up on his nose. So, he got a little irritated. So, he shook his head and the fly did not fly away. And what he thought was, well, let me take one hand, flick the fly and then put my fingers back. As he removed one hand from his ears, the word of God went in. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear God's word. Both his hands fell down and he began to hear God's word. So, the word of God says, people who are dead shall hear God's word and they shall live. So, people who are spiritually dead can hear God's word. If they open their hearts, definitely the Lord Jesus can give complete victory. So, the implication for salvation of souls, I get it from this particular verse. The implication for sanctification. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Whosoever lives and believes. Now, a person who is saved is living in Christ. Now, we cannot say, taking this verse into consideration, we cannot say people will never die. You know, there are some false prophets who preach about immortality on this world. Jesus, but the Bible says, it is appointed for man once to die and then the judgment. After the judgment is over, a person goes to hell or heaven, depending upon his allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, dear friends, when we look at this particular verse, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The meaning is, a person who receives Jesus Christ as a Savior is living. Then later what is needed is, he has to continue to believe. Living in Jesus, if you continue to believe, you will never die. You will never die. 
So this is what I want to tell you, friends. If you are a person who is who has, who is saved, know for sure that you continue to if you continue to have faith on on the Lord Jesus, you will never die spiritually. The life will continue because Jesus is the resurrection and life. So people who preach immortality, they are wrong. At the same time, if you are a believer, you should understand that you have to keep your life right before God. So dear friends, what is needed is, if you are a believer who is living in the Lord Jesus Christ, see that you continue to have faith. Faith and clean conscience go together. I know about it in my life. I have always been preaching on that. You may say that you have faith in God. It is not enough. You must have a clean conscience so that the faith will be operational. So, when you keep your clean, clean conscience, faith will be viable and with that faith you will never die. What I'm, I'm, I'm implying here is, after salvation, you may fall in sin, you may fall back, you may backslide because the sinful nature is in you. In that situation, when you come closer to the Lord and receive His grace again and humble yourself and say, I'm sorry, Lord, the blood of Jesus can cleanse you again. It's not a license to go and sin again and say, I'm sorry. You'll continue to be in a dull position. I'm not meaning that. But what I'm trying to say is, if you are a person who is alive, living and believing, you shall never die. You'll never go to hell. I'm not talking about uh, eternal salvation for everybody who simply believes on the Lord. No. A person may lose salvation if a person is not continuing to f have faith on God. So, what I'm implying here is, after salvation, it is imperative that you'll, you'll have to have a viable, workable faith. St. Paul says, faith that works through love is he needed. And James in, James in his epistle writes that faith and work go together. See, if you say you're believing on the Lord, it must be shown in your own work. God should work in and through you. So, he who believes and continues to believe, he who is living and continues to believe, shall never die. Now, what do you will do is, if you are a person who is alive, life will not stop with you. Life will be passed on to other people. Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, that a person lays his life for his friends. Now, we may not be required to give our life for our friends. At the same time, if you are a person who is living in Jesus, life will be imparted to other people. John in his epistle says, when you see a person who is sinning, a sin not unto death, pray for him, God shall give him life. So the life that is in you will be passed on to others, not your life. The life that God has given to you will be passed on to other people when you love people and pray for them. When you love people and preach God's word to them, you'll continue to be a harbinger of joy and peace to the people of God, to other people. So you will be a soul winner. Now this is what is required. If you are living, if you are living and believing, you'll continue to be a blessing for other people. Then the, uh, the next point that I want to place before you is implication to see the glory of God. Jesus told, when Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus, he said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said, said to her, Did he not say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? I tell you, friends, when a person is sinning, there is bad smell. Stench is there. When a person who has been saved, when he backslides, there is stench in his own spiritual life. But in our own life, many problems may be there that are bringing out stench. But if we bring Jesus there, Jesus came to Bethany. Jesus, he was standing out, outside the uh, city. And Martha went and spoke to him with all her theology. She was not able to bring Jesus into the problem. But when Mary went and fell at his feet and wept and prayed, Jesus was moved. He came to the problem. This is what is needed. Many people feel, why God is not answering my prayers? Many people want somebody else to pray for them so that they may be delivered. Deliverance is needed. I understand. At the same time, what they have to do, they have to do. By their prayer and faith, they have to bring the Lord into the near the problem. And Jesus did not roll the stone away from the grave. He said, take the stone away. So if you have to have clarity in your own life, if you have to have blessing in your own life, if the stench should not be there, obey what Jesus wants you to obey. What you have to do, God will not do. Things that are impossible with man are possible with God. Things that man can do, man must do, man must do. So dear friends, Jesus told the people, remove the stone. And immediately this, Martha said, it begins to stink. He said, no. If you believe, 
you shall see the glory of God. I apply these particular words of seeing the glory of God in our day-to-day -day living. We may have problems, financial crisis may be there, other problems may be there, sicknesses may be there, but what we have to do is remove the stone. Remove things that are not wanted in your life. Remove things that are hiding God from working in your own life. When you remove those things, you will definitely see the glory of God in everything that you do. Because Jesus Christ who is in you is a hope of glory. If Jesus is in you as a hope of glory, definitely he will perform miracles in your life. What is needed is keep a clean conscience and also obedience to his word and then you shall see the glory of God. How many of you are not willing to remove the stone? The Bible says, he who hides his sin shall not prosper, but he who confesses them and forsakes them shall have mercy. So what is needed is, when you come to Christ, when, God, when you want God to work in your own life, this is what you should do. If there are hindrances in your life, remove them. Remove them with all your heart. Then you shall see God working in your own life. So dear friends, Jesus tells today, if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. He told Martha, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. Belief is viable. It is living faith. When you have this living faith, you shall see the glory of God. Sometime back, one lady from North India connected with me and uh, she has been often asking for prayer. And uh, two weeks back, she said, uh, Brother, I'm so fed up with life, I am planning to commit suicide. I very clearly told her, if you commit suicide as a believer because of the problems, you'll go into hellfire. I spoke to her lovingly, spoke to her firmly, prayed. Next day she said, brother, I have not committed suicide. Dear friends, suicide is not the problem. If you are living and believing, you shall see the glory of God. Stench will not be there. How are you in the presence of God today? Dear friends, when we look at this particular verse where Jesus said, I am the resurrection of the life, I want to bring an implication about the resurrection and judgment that we all have to face. Just to read a verse from the scriptures to authenticate it, John's Gospel, 5th chapter, verses 26 to 29, if we read, there the Lord Jesus says, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted Son to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Dear friends, when Jesus Christ came into this world, this is what he says. As the Father has life in himself, he has granted his Son also to have life in himself. So Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He can give life to people, bring them back to life, people when they die, if it is his will. And also people who are spiritually dead can hear God's word and shall live. And people are living and believing, need not die again in this world, need not die spiritually. They will be getting ready for the, I mean, after the physical death, they will be ready for the resurrection. But here Jesus says, though he is the savior of the world, he is going to be the judge of this world. So Jesus says, God has given him, he speaks about himself, God has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Dear friends, Jesus Christ the son of God, also son of man. He was fully God and fully man when he came into this world. So as a man he lived in this world, he was tempted in all manners as we are, yet he did not sin. He knew no sin, he had no sin, he did no sin. He could have sinned if he wanted to. At the same time, he knew about human problems. He was a man. He suffered like us. He knew about hunger. He knew about other problems that people face. But without sin, he was able to face everything. Now, since he lived with humans, he knows how to judge people. So here he says, he has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. So dear friends, Jesus is the Savior today. Today is the day of salvation. A day is going to come when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. He is going to execute judgment upon the whole world. All who died without Christ will stand before him with an ignoble body. They'll rise again. This is what Jesus said. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Just before this, he says in that particular uh, chapter in John's Gospel, um, people who hear God's word, the voice of the Son of Man, shall live. Now, the gospel is preached to many people. The word of God is given. People who are alive shall be saved. 
when they hear God's word. At the same time, God, Jesus' words will be heard by people who are in the graves. All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. When Jesus commands them, they come forth. Jesus is the resurrection and life. And he says, there will be, a, there will be a bifurcation. Two groups will be separated. Two groups will be there. One group, they will rise, up, rise again for the resurrection of life. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Now the decision is yours. Not God's. Jesus is going to be the judge on that day. No more savior on that day. Now he is a savior. It is imperative that you come closer to the Lord and understand that there is life beyond the grave. Many have no idea about the life beyond the grave. They have no understanding that after death they are going to face the judgment. So maybe you are a believer who go to goes to church and comes back. Are you able to live in the spirit? Are you living and believing? Then you will alive forevermore. You will be living forevermore. Death will not take hold of you. Though you physically die, you will rise again. So dear friends, regarding the second coming of the Lord Jesus, we read about the resurrection. People who died in Christ shall rise first, and others who are alive shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. At the, uh, at the end of the seven years tribulation period, this is going to happen. Now, what we should understand is, we must decide whether we are on the right track or not. After death, there is no possibility of changing your path. Only two ways that the Bible speaks about. Way to eternal life, way of the world that leads to death. So dear friends, today you may not hear God's word, but day is going to come, you will hear the voice of God. All who are in the graves shall hear the voice of God. They shall rise again. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. You know, there are people who believe, well, I believe on the Lord, my sins are forgiven. Sins that I committed, sins that I am I'm committing, sins that I will commit later, all are forgiven. Blanket pardon. It is not. Here the word of God says, people have done good. Only after the Holy Spirit comes in, all good that you do will be God's good. So after salvation, you like to wait in the presence of God, get His grace and do what God wants you to do. If you do that, there will be victory when, uh, in, the, in the life beyond. You will be rising again for life eternal. And others who have not been able to do good, when they do evil, they shall have the resurrection of condemnation. So, people who died without Christ will rise again. Body will be there. It is an ignoble body. All this stamp of sin that you have done all your life will be on your own personality, on your own body. Glory will not be there. But once when you receive Jesus as your Savior, when you rise again, you shall be like Jesus. This is what the Word of God says. St. Paul says, I do not know how I will be in future. I see through a glass darkly, then face to face. I shall be known as I am known. We shall be like Jesus. John also says, when we rise again, when Jesus comes back, we shall see him as he is and shall be translated into his own likeness. So, dear friends, these are the blessings that are before you. It is your choice. It, 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 be, it is based upon your choice. If you have not received Jesus as a Savior, this is the time for you to come closer to God and understand that God has kept everything in store for you. If you are a saved person but is backsliding, there is hope for you. Come closer to God. Repent and then remove all the ugly things. Then God is able to give you complete victory. And if you are a person who has not received Jesus Christ as a Savior, wake up to the reality. The Lord still loves you and He is able to give you complete victory in your own life. So dear friends, I spoke to you about the I am declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ, the implication of Jesus' declaration that his, uh, resur uh, his resurrection life for salvation of souls, for sanctification and to see the glory of God. If you believe you shall see the glory of God, the stench of past sins will not be there you will have aroma of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you face future, when you think about death, need not be afraid. Because when you die, you shall see the glory of God. Later when Jesus comes back and during his resur resurrection, you will be translated into his own likeness. So dear friends, I want you to understand this eventuality that we have in this world. When this wo the life in this world is over, we have to enter into the, the spiritual world. And there is eternal life and eternal damnation. It depends upon our choice. There was one lady whose name was uh, Lady Anne Grimston um, in um, England. 
she never believed in the Lord. She had everything that she could aspire for. Every property was there and uh, she was living in luxury. She never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. She never believed in life after death. Her idea was eat, drink and be merry. Tomorrow we die. We die. So though people spoke to her about afterlife, she never believed in it. She never believed in heaven or hell. So she said, I shall not continue to live. It is unlikely that I shall continue to live as, the, as that a tree will grow out of my body. When I die, they will bury me. If a tree is going to grow out of my body, I will live. And she was rather challenging heaven. If indeed there is life here, hereafter, trees will render us under my tomb. So she declared like that. And she was buried in St. Peter's Church in Tevin, England. And uh, very I mean, strong um, marble was kept over her, over her tomb. After some time, the marble began to tilt. And it began to break. And very tender leaves were coming out of the grave. And what people did, they tried to um, patch it up. They put cement and all, patched it up. Again, the tree began to grow. And the, the grave was broken open. Though they tried to put a lot of iron railings here and there, the, the grave was not, they could not control the grave. It could not hold the, hold the grave. What happened was the stone broke, broke open and the tree began to grow. The, it grew in, with four trunk trees there. The, one of the biggest trees, ash trees in England. So dear friends, this woman threw, threw a challenge at the face of God. She said there is no life. From her own body, this, the, the small seed of an ash tree began to grow. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The message that you hear today is true. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he will never die. If a person believe, living and believing, he will never die. If a person believes on him, though he is dead, he shall rise again, if it is God's will. So, dear friends, Jesus declares, I am the resurrection and the life. It is imperative that we humble ourselves, accept this challenge from the Lord, and agree to humble ourselves before him, so that we will have life of Jesus in our lives. And when we die, when we leave this world, there is glory waiting for us. May the Lord bless you, dear friends. Shall we look to God in prayer? Loving Father, I pray that you may lay your hands upon all these dear friends. Some of them may be thinking about death. Let there be no negativism in the hearts of these dear people, O oh Lord. You died and rose again. I am Alpha and Omega and all that are in between. And also you said, O oh Lord, that life and death are in your hands. The, the keys of hell are in your own hands. You know about the future. So Lord God, I pray that you may help these dear people to believe on your own word and follow you with all their hearts. If they are living and believing, they will never die. So let them take positive cues from this particular message and understand your love and follow you with all their hearts. You are a savior now. Tomorrow you are going to be the judge of this whole world. So, O oh God, I pray that we may help, we may be able to serve you with all our hearts. I pray that you may touch these dear people, every brother and sister, every man and woman, every boy and a girl, every child may be blessed, O oh God. I give you all the glory and help me to have the joy in serving you till the last breath. In Jesus' almighty name I pray. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you this day and prepare you for eternity.